Welcome to Myth Machine. If you are a Star Wars fan, then you know that the sequel trilogy was divisive to say the least. There are many people who absolutely love it, and there are plenty of people, especially on this platform, that cannot stand it. Now, while I land somewhere in between where I think there's a lot of good in it, some of the best Star Wars that we've ever gotten is in the sequel trilogy, but also some of the absolute worst Star Wars that we've ever gotten is in the sequel trilogy, like this. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't know what they were going for there. Whichever side you land on, whether you love it, whether you hate it, whether you're in between, no one can deny that there were definitely some missed opportunities in the sequel trilogy. So today we're gonna talk about 10 of the biggest missed opportunities in the sequel trilogy that would have improved it for most fans. Let's do it. Now, the sequel trilogy was the first time that Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford were reprising their roles that they left off in Return of the Jedi in 1983. This was something that fans all over the world were looking forward to, were super excited about, and frankly, was one of the biggest draws to the sequel trilogy. I remember when The Force Awakens was announced, people lost their minds. People were going crazy when the trailer came out with that famous line, Chewie, we're home. People were going insane. I don't think that we will ever feel that again, that we'll ever have that much hype around a franchise returning. I hope we do have something like that in the future because it was absolutely amazing to live through, but I've racked my brain and I just can't think of another franchise that can do that. Even Star Wars returning in, let's say, another 15 years with another sequel trilogy, there's just so much saturation of Star Wars out there now under the Disney umbrella that it's just never gonna feel that big of a return as it was with The Force Awakens. And again, a huge part of that hype was because those main characters, the big three, were returning. But even in The Force Awakens, the very first film in the sequel trilogy, we saw the death of Han Solo, and we instantly knew that we were never going to see the big three together again. And that, my friends, I think is a massive missed opportunity for Lucasfilm. And while I understand why they didn't do that, it would have been very hard to get them together to tell the story that they wanted to, they introduced flashbacks in The Force Awakens, and they used them throughout all three films in the sequel trilogy, so there is really no excuse that they couldn't have had some sort of flashback of Han, Luke, and Leia going on a quick adventure together. We saw Luke and Leia together training. There absolutely was a way that they could have been creative to get them together, even in just a short, brief flashback scene. Now, when George Lucas released the prequel trilogy, there were tons and tons of new ships. In contrast, the sequel trilogy decided to go back to all of the original ships that we had. We saw basically updated versions of X-Wings, updated versions of A-Wings and Y-Wings, beyond a new ship here and there that you barely saw on screen for even a few seconds. There really wasn't anything new here. And even when there was something new, it was extremely derivative of what had come before in the original trilogy. We know that the concept artists and everyone who worked on the film is more than talented enough to come up with new ideas. In fact, they absolutely did. You can see designs for brand new ships in the art of Star Wars books that came out, but it is an absolutely massive missed opportunity to introduce new ships, new designs to the lore and expand the Star Wars universe especially because 30 years have gone by between the trilogies. It's not like we're still driving the same cars that we drove 30 years ago. We improve, we advance, technology changes, and we want to see that in this ever-expanding universe. And speaking of expanding universes, the original trilogy always did a fantastic job of just leaving little breadcrumbs, little hints, little name drops to events that expanded the universe, even if we didn't know about them. For example, the Clone Wars. Originally, it was just a one-liner. Your father fought in the Clone Wars. We had no idea what that was. And now we have all this lore that was able to be expounded upon. But also in the original cut of A New Hope, not the special edition where we now see Jabba, we had no idea who Jabba was. We just knew that the bounty hunter Greedo was going after Han Solo for Jabba. And it was this name that was planted in the first movie. It came up a little bit in Empire Strikes Back, and then it pays off in The Return of the Jedi with that great opening Jabba Palace sequence. And they almost did that in this sequel trilogy. If you'll remember, there is an offhanded comment by Finn as he's talking to Han about the Rathars. They talk about where Han is delivering those and he says that he's delivering the Rathars to King Prana. Now, this would have been a great opportunity to 
bring it full circle and somewhere in either The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker, have them go to King Prana. We find out who he is and it's this planting from the beginning of the story that has paid off later on in the sequel trilogy. There are so many things like that that could have been done to just expand the lore, but instead, we really didn't do a ton of that. Another thing that would have been great is to see Finn struggle when he is hit by Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens. It took an absolutely devastating blow up the back. That should have been fatal, but he did survive. And so there need to be consequences for that. There need to be repercussions. There need to be struggle. That was low hanging fruit, an easy setup by J.J. Abrams for Ryan Johnson that just wasn't picked up. Finn literally wakes up the next day and he's perfectly fine. It could have been really cool to see Finn with maybe a back brace or something. He's got these disabilities now that he has to deal with, as well as trying to figure out his place in the galaxy, his place as a deserter or as a defected stormtrooper. And something that Star Wars has really been good at for the most part is diversity and inclusivity. And this would have been a great opportunity to showcase a main character with a physical disability. One thing that I've always loved about Star Wars is that it's a story that's made for kids, adults, families, literally everyone. And I love that there's usually a character that everyone can see themselves in. They can put themselves in the story through that character. And this would have been a great opportunity, not only for character development for Finn, not only to see this struggle, not only to add some new cool technology to the galaxy, but most importantly, to add that inclusivity so that physically disabled fans could see themselves in that character. And while we're on Finn, let's also talk about the elephant in the room. He should have absolutely become a Jedi. He was set up to be a Jedi that was dropped in the Last Jedi, and then they tried to sloppily throw it back together at the last minute where now he's kind of force sensitive. We don't really know. Hopefully there's more stories in the future that dig into that, but it would have been absolutely great to see him go on a similar but different arc just like Rey as they are both learning to use the force. This also would have differentiated it from the original trilogy where we're basically just following Rey through a similar arc to Luke. This would have given us two protagonists, one though who is a part of the dyad, she's got this pull to the dark side, and the other one who has basically left the First Order, left the dark side, and is going to the light. Another thing I think we all would have loved to see is some more character development for Captain Phasma. They cast Gwendolyn Christie in this role. You do not cast an actress of that caliber in that role and not use her. I still to this day cannot believe the misuse of that character. If you've seen Game of Thrones, you know that she knocked it out of the park as Brienne of Tarth. She's a fantastic actress. And also that armor is so badass. You could have made this a super menacing character. Instead, all she does is kind of walk around, say a one-liner here or there. She gets thrown in a trash compactor and then she gets beat by Finn in the second movie. But there's no build up to that. Even if you had just taken this stormtrooper who Finn fights in the first film and made that his captain, his former captain, who's now calling him a traitor, as opposed to just some random stormtrooper, that would have improved that arc so that they have this struggle throughout the three films or throughout the two films even. I don't know what happened there. I think just the obvious lack of a plan, lack of a full vision for the entire trilogy really did a disservice to really every character, but especially those minor characters that could have been fantastic additions to the Star Wars galaxy. Two more characters that were massive missed opportunities are Maz Kanata and General Hux. Maz was this mysterious little alien with all of these connections to all of these smugglers and pirates, but also this deeper connection to the Force. Some reason she has a knowledge of the Force and we have no idea why. She also has the Skywalker Saber. It was set up that we would find out where that went, why she had it. But no, instead we get this. A good question for another time. Tell us now. And General Hux, played by Donald Gleason, did a fantastic job in The Force Awakens. I was genuinely blown away by his performance as he gave his speech to the entire First Order before Starkiller Base fired. And I couldn't wait to see him just get more and more unhinged through the continuation of the sequel trilogy. But instead, he becomes the brunt of mama jokes and he gets thrown around by Snoke. And that could have even worked if he took that pain and that anger from being pushed around and then it festered and blew up inside of him and he became this crazed Nazi type character in The Rise of Skywalker. But no, he just takes a back seat and now he's the spy. Again, massive missed opportunity. Now, one of the most iconic scenes in any film ever, not just Star Wars, any film ever, is when Luke Skywalker confronts Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. Darth Vader reveals that he's his father, he cuts off his hand, it's absolutely perfect, it's cinema magic. But a Skywalker losing their hand became kind of a tradition as we saw the prequel trilogy come into play and Anakin, his father, also lost his hand. This was set up 
in Return of the Jedi, where Luke Skywalker cuts off Darth Vader's hand and we see that there's all these wires and mechanics underneath and he realizes that his father has gone through some of the same struggles that he has. Again, this was low hanging fruit. There's a Skywalker in the sequel trilogy in Kylo Ren or Ben Solo. We carry on the tradition of saying, I have a bad feeling about this in every single Star Wars film. We should have carried on the tradition of having a Skywalker lose their hand in the sequel trilogy as well. Now, probably the most divisive part of the sequel trilogy was the character and the portrayal of Luke Skywalker. Again, we hadn't seen him since Return of the Jedi when he became a Jedi Knight, when he and his father defeated the Emperor, defeated the Empire by taking on all of the qualities that make a true Jedi Knight. When we saw Luke Skywalker for the first time at the very end of The Force Awakens, he was this mysterious Jedi master now. And the look in his eyes as he looked at Rey as she held out his father's lightsaber, you could just tell that he had seen so much in that last 30 years. When the credits rolled and the music blared, everyone left that theater high. They were so excited to see and speculate what happened to Luke Skywalker and who is he? What are we gonna see with him? And again, instead we got this. Oh, I'm just, sorry, I'm, I'm never gonna get over that. And while I don't have a problem with the character arc of Luke Skywalker in the sequel trilogy, I do think that it was a massive missed opportunity to see Luke going ham. It's the reason why we got this scene in The Mandalorian. This is what fans wanted to see. And I think fans would have been more forgiving. They would have been more understanding of the character arc that the filmmakers wanted to have for Luke Skywalker in the sequel trilogy if we had even just gotten one scene of Luke doing something similar to this. But I think the absolute biggest missed opportunity of the Star Wars sequel trilogy is the death of Ben Solo. While Rey took on the name of Skywalker at the end of The Rise of Skywalker, no matter what you think about that happening, there actually is no Skywalker alive now. And that didn't have to happen. There were a million other ways that they could have kept Ben Solo alive and still had him atone for killing his father, Han Solo. Just one of those ideas would have been to have him exiled on Ahch 2, just like Yoda or Obi-Wan or even Luke before him. When the Jedi have that big of a failure, they go into exile. And it would have been great to have him go there. He would be stuck there, no ship. He would have to be there to atone for his sins. But it would have also left the door open for more Skywalker-centered stories down the line. There could have been this interesting dynamic of Rey off on her adventures, but she's still got this link to Kylo through the Force, and he's maybe a guide to her. He's kind of her little angel or devil on the side of her shoulders telling her what to do. Or we saw that Luke was able to cut himself off from the force on Octu, and that could be something where Rey drops him off there and cuts him off from the force takes away his force powers. And so that is how he has to atone. But we could have brought him back 30 years down the line when you absolutely know that Disney is going to make a sequel sequel trilogy because there's just, let's face it, there's too much money on the table there. They're not gonna be able to stay away from that. But because they just killed him off, now whenever there is an inevitable sequel sequel trilogy, we're just gonna have an adopted Skywalker, which while I like the idea of, it just doesn't hit as hard as having an actual Skywalker alive for the Skywalker saga. And that's just a few of the missed opportunities from the sequel trilogy. There are many, many more. Let me know in the comments down below what your biggest missed opportunities were in the sequel trilogy. Let's have a discussion. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you around.